Welcome to our special series of interviews for the LF Energy Spring Summit 2021. And today we have with us Lauren Schmidt, founder and CEO of Digital for Grids. Please tell me a bit about Digital for Grids. What problem you saw in this sector space that you try to solve which led you to create this company? So what we are seeing is the uh, uh, pro proliferation of uh, distributed energy resource uh, at the edge of the system uh, with the uh, large growth of renewable, distributed renewable, photovoltaics, uh, but as well as electrical vehicle and storage. And so the complexity uh, lies into connecting the uh, uh, back-end uh, grid control room environment and market system with the front-end a distributed energy resource and uh, and consumers. So this is uh, really to rethink uh, the connectivity layers and the control layers and, and making sure we can orchestrate and enable real-time connectivity uh, from the uh, grid operator down to the uh, to the end user of the system. Um, as you mentioned that, you know, there are so many new uh, sources uh, now as compared to earlier. At the same time, we also see that, especially with this pandemic, when people are working from home, is there also increase in demand for energy? That, that's absolutely right. And I think the uh, people working from home have uh, realized the importance of the uh, resiliency of the power supply into their home. And the fact that uh, it's on one side, uh, getting very easy to work from home uh, because of all the uh, cloud and IT, uh, new IT environments. On the other side, we, be, we become more and more dependent on power. And, and of course, that, uh, that challenge the extreme uh, scenarios uh, where, the, uh, where the grid is uh, facing incidents, in which case there is, uh, there is really a new thinking uh, to have in terms of resiliency. Uh, how is the resiliency of the uh, grid is to be managed, but as well as the resiliency of the uh, home energy system especially when it is equipped with the electrical vehicle uh, PV and which then uh, can offer standby, standby power by their own. In today's world, everything is kind of becoming uh, software driven. And as we saw in the telco space, uh, where they are moving from black boxes towards open source hardware and open source software, do you also see a similar trend in the energy sector as well? Uh, yes, definitely. The uh, open source is uh, also making its way into the uh, energy sector. Uh, what we uh, particularly see is the um, basically uh, significant benefits uh, which we can gain from other domain than the energy sector, uh, particularly into the space of IoT, uh, artificial intelligence, and all these new uh, uh, building blocks. And 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 on, in the same time, we see the uh, benefit of uh, uh, using, um, I would say, a basic technology stack, uh, which are actually derived outside the energy sector and which, uh, which would make value in, in the energy sector to accelerate uh, deployments of these uh, complex digital architectures. So uh, it, is, uh, for digital for, it is uh, for digital for grids very important to keep an eye on one side on what's happening into the open source domain and all what we can learn from uh, basically other sectors and, and making best use of these uh, uh, new technology uh, components. And when they are available uh, open source, it's even better and adapt them and integrate them into the new uh, uh, utility and control room environments. So definitely open source is an enabler and an accelerator of these uh, digital transformation. Talk about the importance of an LF Energy Foundation and how are you involved with it? So LF Energy is, um, is a very solid uh, foundation to uh, develop open source and uh, it has already a lot of success in, in other sectors. And while we uh, uh, develop uh, our uh, thinking through the uh, Linux uh, Foundation for Energy, uh, what we realize is that there are components uh, which are already being used in other domains, and you were mentioning Kubernetes or uh, uh, or a technology like like grid edge intelligence, which do have the same uh, a very similar application into the energy sector. So we really uh, count on the uh, Linux Foundation to uh, to be an accelerator of the uh, technology transfer 
from the uh, telecom IT sector into the uh, into the energy domain and and learning through the uh, exchange in the Linux Foundation for Energy uh, with the senior uh, energy expert on how the energy sector can make the, uh, its own application of this technology uh, um, to, to respond to the needs of uh, renewable integration, uh, particularly or uh, uh, co prosumer uh, connectivity with, uh, with utility control rooms. The LF Energy and the whole community is organizing uh, the LF Energy Spring Summit. Tell us a bit about the summit because this is a reoccurring event which uh, happens, you know, every uh, once in a while, uh, fall and spring. So talk about the focus of uh, the spring summit. So we see the uh, a lot of maturity uh, have uh, been brought into the discussion in the LF Energy, and uh, we have really uh, thought a lot about the end-to-end -end architecture. Of the um, of the system of the future system on how to uh, uh, get these uh, various technology components to interact with each other and and I think this summit is is an excellent occasion to share best practices uh, from various continents uh, uh, various use cases and and trying to uh, to make uh, an analysis of what is already being done into uh, into applying such uh, open source layers. So progressively, uh, the uh, Linux Foundation for Energy has, um, has, has positioned as, as, as a very interesting forum uh, to share these best ideas and best practices. Tell me, how is um, Dig Digital for Grids participating at this event? Are you presenting any sessions or talks? Talk about your involvement with the summit. So we, we do have, uh, uh, I am myself implied into two different sessions. One session uh, is really about the um, uh, management of peer-to-peer uh, -peer transaction uh, at the edge of the system and here I'm uh, contributing as the uh, uh, participant into a panel uh, organized by the Florence School of Regulation and I'm going to make uh, particularly a statement around how to enable sectorial integration and uh, technology orchestration across various uh, energy uh, domains and on the other side, I am uh, also um, uh, facilitating a panel which is more focusing onto the uh, prosumer uh, interface uh, with the main system and what are the main challenges which are yet to overcome in terms of interoperability, in terms of real-time inter interactivity. And, uh, and here we, uh, we do have a very interesting contribution from the European Commission as well as the uh, Demand Response Association uh, in Europe. So I hope to be able to uh, uh, analyze what are the current challenges and how we can hope the uh, next digital chapter uh, of the uh, European uh, investments are going to enable to overcome this challenge. Lauren, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only the company, but also the community, the challenges, the problems, and the upcoming events. Thank you for your time today. Thanks a lot, and I'm very much looking forward to uh, discussing into the next event.